The stoke level is very high. We're here with Sasha from On Point Dino to see what kind of power his 4.2 liter VQ will make. Will it make 500 horsepower or will it go kaboom? There's only Let's one way to find out, buddy. If you guys didn't see our last video here with Sasha from On Point, go watch that video because he gives us a very detailed rundown of this engine and what's to come in the future. Some very exciting things, including a hybrid system, but today is not about hybrid power. <laughs> today is about VQ power. It's in the hole. You run it a little bit already just to break it in. Yeah, we just want to make sure that, uh, you know, nothing too catastrophic early on <laughs> right. is going to happen. Right. So we've kind of got some about an hour of idle time and okay. 2,000 RPM time and changed the oil already once. Okay. But yeah, you can see this thing's tucked in way back in there, down low. There's yeah. tons of room for the rad to come out. We did some cage work while it was out, so it's like a whole different car now. It's all plumbed up and ready to go? We're excited. Uh, it's, this is a, you know, pretty special. It is pretty special. Pretty special motor, so. By the way, in the comment section in the last video, we had a bunch of questions about the engine that maybe we should address now, like, People were asking what the rod to stroke ratio was, stuff like that. So you were saying it's 96 mil, bore 96 mil stroke? Yep. So it's a yep. square rod to stroke ratio, which should let it no, run pretty rod, high. No, rod to stroke ratio is the length of the rod to the stroke. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So it's S2000 rods. I don't have that on top of my head right now. But if you just want to Google S2000 rod length, the stroke's 96, you can do. You can figure out the ratio from there. Play with the keyboard all you want, yeah. And people were also asking about the block, whether it was a DE block or an HR block or a 37 block. Yeah, so it's a VQ35 HR block, Okay. which is the same as a, as a 370Z block. Okay. And the heads are... They're HR heads. HR heads. So still the standard buckets. No, right. no rockers. Right. That's why the bucket machining was required that we talked about last episode. Yeah, I don't think anyone's really made a lot of power on the V-Bell heads yet. So the, obviously because we've got more stroke now, Yeah. the rev limit is down. So before we were revving to 9,000. Mm -hmm. Um, 9,000 is probably too high because we did window the block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're probably going to be around 8,200 okay. uh, to start. Maybe a little bit more in the future if we get kind of the sign off right. from Jim Wolf on yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, for sure 8,200 to start because the piston speed is quite high. Sasha has a bit of a tradition here to uh, sign his motors as a way of wishing it good luck. Uh, what's this tradition all about? Yeah, we gotta just you know, just sign it. She's gotta understand we love her. Let her know that good you know. things are gonna happen here. All right. Well, what's the message on this motor? I think we're gonna go with no matter what happens. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a romantic at heart, everyone. Who knew that Satchel was a romantic? Don't tell my wife. <laughs> it's time to undress the VQ here, everybody. Let her breathe. Let her breathe. This is exciting. All right. Have a look in there, PT. Those are some very attractive holes right there. In case you guys are wondering why we bundled up, this uh, dino cell moves a lot of fresh air, so it's cold in here. Uh, so what have you done now that you've started it up and you've been uh, tapping some keys? What's what's the strategy so far? Yeah, so good news is everything seems to be good so far. Okay. No crazy noises. Yeah. And the firmware seems to be doing doing what it should be doing. Okay. So um, yeah, we're just kind of slowly building up some load, um, starting at 2,000 RPM, 2,500 RPM. Okay. Um, it's well outside of where the engine will ever run, but you know, driving through the paddock and the pits, it's nice for that stuff to just be smooth. Okay. So just kind of map some of that out, and then we'll just slowly build up some more RPM and some more load. Okay. 
And then we'll dump the, uh, <coughs> once we get some running on this, we'll dump this oil out and put synthetic in and we'll start doing the full pulls. If we get there, if we get there. no problem. So you're running it on a non-synthetic right now? Yeah, now like it's break just in on, oil, it's on break in oil. Yep, exactly. What viscosity are you running? It's just 10. It's 10. So we, that's why we have to watch the oil temperature. Okay. And make sure the oil pressure doesn't get too low. And once you're happy and you do that oil change, what are you going to put in for synthetics? Yeah. It's, uh, what are we using now? It's Mobile One uh, Racing. Okay. Zero W40. Zero W40, okay. And for gas, you're running a gas race gas additive to bring the octane yep. level it's up to? It's still the same as before, 94 octane plus the race gas additive. A little uh, non-paid plug here, everyone. This is a race gas concentrate that Sasha's been running for a couple of years now in his race car. and. Uh, as you can see, you can, uh, depending on what proportion you put in, it'll make up to 105 octane. If you look on the chart on the back, actually, you can get it up to 107, starting at a base of 93. Sasha's starting at a base of 94. So we could cheat it up to say maybe a 108 even, but they don't recommend blending it beyond a 105 for reasons that I don't understand. But still pretty cool that you can get a concentrate like this in a can that you can add to pump gas and get your octane up to race gas levels for a considerably lower cost than buying actual race gas. So. It's also pretty convenient to just like carry this around. You can fill up 94 at your local station here in Ontario at least. So it makes a pretty uh, convenient and affordable way to uh, boost your octane. Sweet baby Jesus, I, Sasha. I don't know. What am I seeing here? Did that make know. 450 on like a partial pull? I don't know what to say. That is some serious jam, man. Yeah, Peter didn't get our reaction, but it was like. <laughs> I think I saw a tear in this man's <laughs> eyes. I didn't know he was capable of those kinds of human emotions, yeah. but apparently VQ power <laughs> makes you happy. <laughs> no, that's pretty good. That is outstanding. The yeah. power curve is just like. It's <laughs> basically vertical. What? So. <laughs> wow, and that was to how many RPM? 6200. 6200. Wow. So we're at 445 horsepower at 6200 with a line that's going straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so at 8200, it's going to make about 800 horsepower, no, everyone. Let's, <laughs> but let's be realistic. If you look at the old engine, you can see there's a torque bump at 6500. Yes. So I suspect what's happening is we're getting on the upswing of that bump. Right. We'll probably, you know, get it will well clear at 450 there, but yes. then as we get over, you know, we, we did have, if you look at the old graph, we did have that, just that line at 400 where we just kind of couldn't get past it. Right. So we'll see, hopefully, you know, obviously the displacement's giving us a lot of torque, but we'll see if we can, if we can get through that restriction we had in the last engine. Right. And if this torque can stay around 350 and carry, you know, that that's going to be a pretty healthy. Yeah, am I seeing that 375 foot-pounds of torque here? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty... <laughs> Pretty meaty for a 4.2. <laughs> it's very meaty. That is deliciously meaty. Well, uh, let's let you continue and let's get to 8200 RPM soon. All right, let's get some synthetic in it and we'll. Uh, it's time. RPM in it's time for the synthetic. Yeah, Ooh, this is good. All right. I don't know what to say. 507? Steady state, yeah. So it'll be a bit less than a pull. But I mean, this is only 6,500 RPM, man. This is a madness. 507 at 6,500 RPM? This is madness. Yeah, 400 pound feet of torque. What? It's 100 pound feet of torque more than we had at this <laughs> RPM before. How is this? <laughs> what is going on here? Yeah, it's pretty oh cool. Oh my god, this is wild. It hasn't been completely painless here today, though. There have been some challenges. Well, we're just being super cautious. You okay. know, it's a pretty special motor. I think if it was the other engine, I probably wouldn't have cared. But we're seeing a fair bit of oscillations in the oil pressure. Yeah. <clears throat> so we wanted to have a search through in that, make sure that nothing was going on. And you're feeling okay about it? Um, yeah, so I mean, what we did was we added another oil pressure sensor connected to the dash, so it's a totally separate kind of sensor to monitor it. Yeah. Um, Double-checked all of our oil system 
stuff. We've added another liter of oil to the oil tank. Okay. So we might have just been sucking a bit of air in. I mean, on that one there at 6,500, it looked really clean. Okay, that's encouraging. We're also sampling the sensor much faster than we were before. So okay. we just, we've done a lot more to tighten that up and make sure that we're, we keep an eye on that. Okay. And then, interestingly, you guys noticed that yeah. uh, the middle header was not glowing. Yeah, the middle, middle primary <coughs> on, each, on each bank isn't glowing red, and yeah. the others are. It's really weird. So that's kind of a bit, a bit concerning. So obviously, since it's a new ECU, new firmware, everything, we, we went and we checked the ignition timing on each individual spark plug. Yeah. Just to make sure that we didn't have some sort of configuration problem there. So yeah. those, that all checked out. Um, we're checking the plugs now, and they all look the same. Uh, things making incredible power. It's not yeah. knocking. Yeah. So um, not too worried okay. about the glowing. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to have six wide bands on each one of these yeah, right it? now yeah, to, uh, to make sure the mixture was good. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Um, feeling pretty confident that we're okay there. So I think we need to get a pull in here, man. We it seems see. like a healthy motor. We got to rip this we thing, man. We need to see what's going to happen here. Is it time? Are we going to 82? Well, we're gonna start. We're gonna start doing some pulls. We're gonna start going. I just want to see 8,200 RPM yeah, on here. This is uh, this is something. This is wild. All right, <laughs> let's go. The predictions on Instagram, by the way, are many of them are predicting over 500. So we're already there at 6,500 RPM. Wild. All right, let's keep this. Let's keep this train rolling. There you have it everyone. This is the happiest Sasha I have ever seen in my life and for very good reason. This is a pretty remarkable achievement, a pretty remarkable outcome. It's now fully tuned. It's running to 8200 RPM and it made a peak of 537. 537 horsepower at the rear hubs which would be like over 600 brake horsepower. Oh yeah, totally. That is a wild number. Yeah, I'm like emotionally drained. I bet you are. <laughs> I am too, and it's not even my car. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Like, it's just uh, way more than we expected. Yeah. So Honestly, uh, we all thought 500 was <clears throat> kind of like a stretch goal. Mm -hmm. To get to 537 is just mind-blowing. And I think it's very safe to say now that this is the most powerful naturally aspirated VQ in the world. And if you don't agree, prove us wrong. Show us your dyno charts, because... I frankly don't believe that there's a dyno chart out there that can compare for a VQ. Like this is, <laughs> this is groundbreaking stuff. So we are stoked. And what's, what's next? What's left to do? I mean, there's, is it just a matter of taking this thing to the trap now and breaking all your, your lap records? Yeah, so we've still got to get the flat floor done. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, the air boxes, obviously this was all done without air boxes. So right. we need to eventually build new air boxes because they're going to definitely kill 40 horsepower or something like that. You think so? Um, yeah, before they were killing 30, so... Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So we've got to look at that, but I mean, the car is pretty, getting pretty complete. So, yeah. you know, we'll definitely get out there early in the spring and get, okay. a, get a jump start on the season. And then we'll get that hybrid system going, hopefully by the mid-summer, end of the summer. Okay, so we will see some lap times out of the car with just the motor yeah. as is before you yeah. go to the hybrid system. it was always a system. plan to get everything kind of sh shake it down. And that makes sense, because then that'll show you what the hybrid motor is delivering totally. on top of this package. So. Totally. So there you go, everyone. We will be at the racetrack with Sasha with this thing before the hybrid system goes in, and then we'll show you that whole hybrid system going in in the summer when we, or when Sasha gets to that point in the process. So exciting times, man. This is groundbreaking stuff. What else do we do? What do, what do we do now other than thank Jim Wolf for building a killer yeah, motor? Pretty much all we did was put their engine on the dyno and dyno it. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to give them all the credit. I mean, this is a pretty incredible, uh, pretty incredible engine. You know, uh, like we're up there with factory, um, factory production race car engines at that kind of power to displacement level. It's easy to say, oh well, a smaller engine makes more power. I mean, we can talk about a super bike engine, 600 cc engine makes more power. Sure. The bigger the engine is, the harder it is to make the same power per displacement. Right. It doesn't just scale one to one. Right. So to make this kind of power uh, out of 4.2 liters is, um, you know, it's up there with, with Porsche for sure. It's yeah. Not, not as high as them, but 
it's definitely in the ballpark. You are so. in the ballpark with the best racing motors that Porsche builds. So yeah, it's that's pretty, pretty pretty cool. Pretty wild. Yeah. Pretty wild stuff. And I'm guessing you're going to give those guys a run for their money on lap times too, but uh, the clock will tell us soon. Anyway, I think that's a wrap, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed watching Sasha and Jim Wolf Technologies break all the hearts of you turbocharged guys out there. It's pretty wild to see an NA motor make this kind of power. I know I'll be asking Sasha for a drive. I don't think he'll be dumb enough to let me drive it because this motor is worth more than I can afford to break. <laughs> but who knows? Stranger things may happen, so I stay tuned. I might not tuned. let myself drive it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> who are we going to put in there? Jesse's up. So thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to not miss future updates on this car and the hybrid system and all that other good stuff. 